in this lesson we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of an automated system and learning how to apply that to a given scenario in the exam you will be asked two types of questions one is to identify different parts of an automated system and second is its application in a given industry so let's start by looking at some advantages and disadvantages of automated systems and once you understand those you can apply that to basically any context the benefit of automated systems are that results are often more consistent humans can get tired and they can make mistakes drones robots automated systems don't so the results end up being more consistent and accurate over time they're safer when used in dangerous situations they're faster than humans when taking actions they just follow their programming they're more likely to run perfectly under control settings of course there's a disadvantage that we'll talk about in a moment related to that they're often less expensive in the long run yes they're expensive initially but over time they save money they're more energy efficient in the long run as well and they make efficient use of materials and resources so there is often less wastage when you use automated systems and finally they may increase overall productivity by operating 24 7 of course there are a huge amount of disadvantages as well and they're expensive to set up and purchase so if you don't have the capital at the beginning you perhaps can't use and benefit from them they can't deal with situations which they are not programmed for so sometimes situations can occur where a human being can perhaps respond to them much more effectively than an automated system and they're susceptible to cyber attacks because they might be connected online they also require enhanced maintenance which can be costly because you have to employ engineers and technicians to service them and of course there are other disadvantages which could include job losses low level low paying jobs are often at risk and maybe you will need to retrain your workforce or staff and teach them how to use an automated system and that can cost as well in addition engineers and technicians tend to be a lot more expensive to hire compared to people who work down on an assembly line now let's start looking at the scenarios that you might need to talk about and how automated systems could impact those now the advantages and disadvantages are there these generally apply to most of these however we're going to look at the operation of each of these contexts so we're going to start with automatic lighting systems the sensors used generally are light and infrared sensors the actuators are normally water pumps and switches but if you're using it as part of a light display then actuators come into play otherwise most of the time it's just sensors now the impact based on the scenario that you're given could mean that you reduce energy consumption you increase bulb life for example those kind of things can come into play so you will need to study the scenario and then work out what the impact is so generally how does this type of system work you have light sensors which continuously detect analog light readings these are then sent to a microprocessor via an analog to digital converter or adc the microprocessor will check against its programmed conditions and it will then do nothing or send a signal based on whatever condition that's been specified in the exam question to the actuator via a digital to analog converter because the microprocessor will make a decision digitally the actuator might be an analog device the actuator's purpose is to make a change in the environment and it can do that through the use of motors pistons fans or switches in this case the actuators could be used to turn a light on or perhaps an alarm on depending on what type of system it is this entire cycle from sensing to processing to impacting the environment is continuous and it continues until it's turned off so in exam questions you normally get a mark for structuring your answer like this sensors detecting something automatically passing the data on to the microprocessor the microprocessor doing something with the data then instructing the actuator to do something turn something on off or activating something or the other and the entire cycle is continuous so there's a mark for that particular line at the end of it normally this is around five to six marks and they're very easy marks to gain because the pattern is roughly the same for all scenarios so let's look at another one here we're going to be looking at power stations which is an industrial system the sensors could be temperature pressure gas or radiation and this depends on the scenario again that you're given the actuators are going to be water pumps valves automatic shutdown processes 
these are used to make sure that the temperature doesn't go beyond the normal operating limits the impact again is based on the scenario in this case you could talk about enhanced automation of the power station because it's an industrial process you can talk about efficiency you can talk about safety but power stations are too important to leave in the hands of automated system so Generally, a supervisor will monitor to override the system in an emergency because these kind of things happen. And if you read the news, you'll probably hear about things like earthquakes and tsunamis impacting power stations and manual shutdowns needed. So with the process, you'll probably see a pattern now. Sensors continuously detect analog readings, which are sent to the microprocessor via an ADC. The microprocessor will check against program conditions. And if it meets those conditions, it acts or doesn't act according to the scenario. It sends a signal to the actuator via digital to analog converter and the actuator makes a change in the environment, perhaps turns a valve on or off or starts the water pump or stops water, initiates alarms, things like that. And this entire process or this entire cycle is continuous until turned off. Now for power stations, sometimes the microprocessor is called the distributed control system, which basically means that you're distributing control over a number of systems, which builds in redundancy and backup just in case something fails. You don't need to go into a lot more detail about this term. Just remember that if it comes up in the exam, it basically means decision making and involves a number of microprocessors. And this repeats for other industrial systems as well. On screen, you see medicine manufacturer, here, perhaps sensors like temperature, pH, infrared, and pressure are operating. Actuators are valves and switches. And again, this is based on the scenario. Enhanced automation, efficiency, again, are key gains. And generally, medicine is too important to leave in the hands of automated systems. So a supervisor will monitor to override the system in an emergency here as well. The process is exactly the same. Sensors continuously detect analog readings, which are sent to the microprocessor via an ADC. Microprocessor checks against compare values and informs an actuator or sends a signal to it. And the actuators obviously turn valves on and off, add ingredients as a result of that, measure the hardness of a perhaps tablet, operate heating elements, alert users, and everything is continuous. You normally get a mark for everything is continuous and the use of sensors and the use of microprocessors against programmed conditions. So these are easy marks to get. Let's now look at another field, transport. In transport, you'll get self-driving cars, trains, planes, self-parking cars, all sorts of things. The sensors used here are LIDAR, which stands for light detection and ranging, infrared, laser, and cameras. Actuators are switches and motors to operate brakes, accelerators, and steering wheels. Impact obviously is based on the scenario given, but generally a driver will always be present to monitor or to override the system in an emergency. Of course, you can have completely automated systems, but these are normally trains, which always go on one track and there's no chance of it going on another track. So that kind of works really, really well. However, if you've got multiple tracks in play, then generally there's a driver around. The process is exactly the same as the previous ones. There are sensors which pulse beams of infrared or laser light and detect reflections, which are sent to the microprocessor via an ADC. The microprocessor will calculate the time difference between sending and receiving, and that is used to calculate the distance. It then compares it against stored conditions or values, and based on those conditions, either does nothing or sends a signal to the actuator via DAC. So the actuators actually operate the accelerator, steering, and brakes to control the vehicle. For example, if the microprocessor decides that the vehicle in front is too close, then it'll send a signal to the actuator to slow down. And it does that by perhaps reducing the accelerator speed and controlling the braking system. And as usual, the entire cycle is continuous until you turn the vehicle off. Now, if you look at weather stations, there's a lot of sensors involved here. Generally, weather stations aren't really suitable for automated systems. However, they are becoming more and more important. They are being linked to motors and sprinklers and all sorts of things. We're going to look at a basic weather station. Here you'll have sensors which include temperature, wind speed, humidity, air pressure, rainfall, light sensors, all kinds of sensors. Where the actuators come in, they are used to operate certain devices. For example, to collect the rainfall, we normally use a bucket and the bucket collects rainfall and then a piston is used to tip the bucket over and that's where the actuator comes in. Of course, there are things like alarms that might need to be sounded if the level of rainfall is too much. All of those kind of things come into play. The impact is again based on the scenario given. 
However, the benefits are they offer 24-7 monitoring. We can use weather stations in hazardous conditions, for example, in extreme weather conditions, during hurricanes, weather stations could still be used to measure wind speed and things like that, rather than having human beings in harm's way. The process is once again the same. Sensors record analog data, which is sent to the microprocessor. The microprocessor then compares it against stored conditions and then informs an actuator to do something. And the entire cycle is continuous until turned off. So do pause the video and make sure you jot down how individual systems operate because you never know which type of scenario might come up. Next, we're going to look at simulations, including video games. They also use sensors, for example, accelerometers are in your game controllers, cameras, proximity sensors, and all, all sorts of things. Actuators include motors for vibration, switches, etc. The impact is, once again, based on the scenario given to you in the exam. However, generally, input accuracy, greater realism, enhanced entertainment are the directions you should be going into. Sensors, once again, record analog data, send it to the microprocessor, which then compare against stored conditions and make a decision and then send a signal to an actuator. So the actuators operate the motors in the simulator or the game controller or activate a speaker or operate a piston in a big simulator which moves the entire cabin or they update on-screen movement so your character can react to whatever the game situation is much more accurately. So whatever the case is, a number of actuators will be continuously operating until you turn the game off. And that depends on the inputs that are being gathered from the sensors. So once again, the process is similar to all the previous processes. You have three main parts and they operate in conjunction continuously to ensure that the system works. By now, you should have a good understanding of how automated systems work and you should be able to answer the following questions. You should be able to state two advantages of automated systems and similarly you should be able to state two disadvantages of automated systems. You should also be able to describe the use of automated systems in weather stations or industry or simulations or anything that the exam board throws down your way because the process is similar. All you need to do is tie it into the scenario. You should have a good grasp of what different types of sensors are and then what different types of actuators are, and then you can merge all of them together in your answer. This is normally a four to six mark, possibly seven mark answer at times, and you should be able to claim all the marks with ease. That's all for me for now. If you have any questions, please do write in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.